Good evening, brothers and good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. Just want to share with you this message that the Lord gave me on October the 26th. And I do apologize, it's a couple of days late. It is now October the 28th, but I wanted to be sure that I was sharing something that the Lord wanted me to share and that this message just wasn't for prayer purposes because I do not consider myself a prophet, but more of an intercessor, someone that's responsible for praying for the people of God. And but in this case, this is something he definitely wanted me to share. And I'll just get right into it. But before we get started, let's pray. Dear God, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, thanking you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you for your son. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, please speak through these words, through this presentation. Let the people's minds be enlightened. Lord, refresh us and give us endurance and strength, Lord, to understand what your will is and to walk in your will during these times lord and to be lights for you sharing your love and your light to others and helping us to just come closer to you and do those things that please you we we'll give you all the praise honor and glory in jesus name amen also just want to bring up before i go further you may hear me say jesus or yeshua i use those um, his name interchangeably yeshua is his name in hebrew jesus of course comes from um the greek version of his name and that was translated into our bible to to mean jesus it still means god saves um you can call jesus you know whatever whichever one you like or if you have a different way you like to pronounce it or you feel that it should be pronounced then that is perfectly fine he knows he's lord and in your heart you should know who you are praying to and talking to when you say lord the lord of um abraham isaac and jacob okay that's who we're talking about and his name is Jesus and in Hebrew you may want to call him Yeshua and that is perfectly your choice so when we're not gonna get um, bogged down in those issues but I just do want to say that because that makes a difference to some people but let's all just receive what the Lord has to say and uh, focus on the things that are most important so this message that he wanted me to tell people is judgment is coming warn the people and specifically the ones who say they know the Lord and the reason why is so that we can be delivered amen because warnings are for us to heed so that we do not um, face harm so keep that in mind the message that he gave me comes from uh, Psalm 50 so please study Psalm 50 the entire thing um, and it is titled God the righteous judge in the New King James Version so again that's Psalm 50 and focusing on verses two through six and it reads this way our god shall come and shall not keep silent a fire shall devour before him and it shall be very tempestuous all around him he shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people gather my saints together to me those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice and i don't want to interpret this too much i just want you to allow the holy spirit to speak to you through this uh, message but i will say this um don't be dismayed when you see these different storms, different hurricanes, um, different calamities happening all around. We know that we are in the end times and that all of these things will begin to happen around us with more intensity and with greater frequency. And what God wants us to know is that is a sign of his coming. Okay, that is a sign of his coming. So don't be dismayed. Don't be in fear about it, but just um, stay watchful and stay prayerful. He is coming and he's coming to judge and so the thing what happens when a judge comes into the room usually there's two parties involved there's the innocent and then there's the guilty so when the, when he comes to judge two things are going to be happening at the same time judgments will be coming on the guilty and then deliverance and restoration for those who are innocent okay what judge comes in and punishes the innocent party so keep that in mind again focusing on Psalm 50, but this time dropping down to verses 14 through 15. And this is what the word says. What I want from you is true thanks. I want your promises fulfilled. I want you to trust me in your times of trouble so I can rescue you and you can give me glory. Keeping in mind, again, warnings are given so we can avoid harm. So you may are probably seeing many, many messages from different people um, saying warning urgent warning from the lord judgment is coming that's not to make you afraid 
That is for you to heed the warning so you can get in the proper position with the Lord so that um, you are the, one, are the innocent party receiving deliverance and restoration and not receiving judgment. And so what does the Lord want from us? He wants our true thanks. He has given us a great gift through his son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on the cross for our sins. He wants us to be thankful for that. And one way that we show thanks for God's great gift is by honoring the Lord Jesus. That means loving him and obeying him. The word of God says, in, in the word of God, Jesus says, those who love me, obey me. So we want to make sure that we are um, focusing our heart to obey the Lord. That doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. It, we all make mistakes every day, you know, and Jesus is our salvation. He is our righteousness. However, when we are really loving the Lord, we don't lie down in those mistakes. We ask for forgiveness. We repent. And then we're thankful. And he just, um, you know, covers our sins and he forgives us and he, um, we are righteous through Jesus Christ, but we do need to love the Lord and obey him. So we are just continuing every day to be, draw closer to the Lord and walk in his righteousness. And this is nothing that's hard to do because we're full of his Holy Spirit who gives us power to obey him, to be close to him. And again, we don't have to be in fear or, or insecure of our salvation because when the Holy Spirit is in us, when we make when we sin or we fall, we just confess, repent, and we get right back up and we keep on going with the Lord. And he is helping us. Imagine a baby trying to walk. Of course, the baby falls down, keeps getting up, keeps trying to walk, gets stronger, and keeps growing. So that's how the Lord sees us. His children, he is, he knows we are growing as we walk with him. And he's right there with us every step of the way, helping us. So be thankful for this, that he has died for our sins. And he's given us his Holy Spirit to help us in our Christian walk. And this is what he wants us to do in times of trouble. He wants us to trust him so he can rescue him and uh, heed the warnings don't ignore the warnings heed the warning and now again focusing on verses 16 through 17 in psalm 50 and also 22 through 23 it says but to the wicked god says what right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Whoever offers praise glorifies me and to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. So again, um, when we call Jesus our Lord, we don't have a right to cast his words just to the side or to ignore his instruction. If he's our Lord, then we need to be reading his word, obeying his word, um, drawing close to him through prayer and or just talking to him. Prayer is just a conversation with, with God. And then we don't want to forget God. We don't want to trust in everything else but the Lord, trust in our wealth, trust in our job, trust in, you know, the government or whatever. He wants us to trust him because he is the one who delivers and he's our provider. And Again, when we honor the Lord, when we trust him, that means we do the things that he asks us to do and we adjust our behavior. Imagine a parent with a child. Mom and dad comes in and they tell you, okay, I need you to do this, this, that, and the other. If you're, you love your parents, you do it. You do it. And so, you know, Jesus is our Lord. We have God the Father. We have the Holy Spirit within us. If they are giving us instructions, just like obedient children, we need to do that. Okay, and God is patient, he's loving, but we do have the ability to obey the Lord, and so we need to heed God the Father. We need to heed and we need to obey. Even Jesus obeyed. Jesus was obedient unto death. So he, we have his spirit. We can obey, and all we need to do, again, is ask for help. He will help us. But again, if we really consider Jesus to be our Lord, and we quote his words and quote the scripture, then that means we need to heed the word of God and heed the scripture and heed his warnings. And again, the next verse that um, the Lord would have me share with you, it comes from Isaiah 50, and it reads this way. As, and we're focusing on Isaiah 50, 10 through 11, and it reads this way. Who among you fears the Lord? Who obeys the voice of his servant? Who walks in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Look, all you who kindle a fire, who encircle yourselves with sparks, walk in the light of your fire and in the sparks you have kindled. 
This you shall have from my hand. You shall lie down in torment. And again, this um, is not to bring fear, but this is in the word of God and we need to heed it. And what he's basically saying in verse 11 is when you kindle your own fire, that means you do things your way. You have your own plan, your own method, and you don't want to trust the Lord and you don't want to do things his way. He says, well, you're going to walk in your own way and you're going to walk in the sparks that you have kindled. But this is what to expect from him. He says, you shall lie down in torment because God is judging everything that is not of him. So what we want to do is be in God's will to be in Christ because he's judging everything that is outside of his will. So let's take heed the warning, make sure we're in the will of God and that we are praying to the Lord, asking him to forgive us, asking for his help, and he will do that. And so if you're in Christ, feel confident. You have nothing to fear. And if you have drifted from the Lord, come back to the Lord. He has his arms open wide, ready to receive you. And this warning goes out to you because he loves you. And let's pray now. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, ask him into your heart today. Just say something similar to this. Um, Dear God, I just thank you because you, I know you love me and I've heard this message and I know you sent your son to die for my sins and I confess that I'm a sinner. And right now I repent of my sins and I ask that you forgive me and bring me into a close relationship with you. Bring me into your family, Lord. Forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness and help me to obey you and walk close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So again, if you do not know the Lord, please pray. Um, if you feel like you're not sure if Jesus is Lord, even ask God, say, reveal to me who, who is Lord, who is the real God, and he will answer you. Um, because the true God answers prayer. He knows everything that's going on in your mind. You can just reach out to him, and he is ready to save you. He wants to bring you close to him. So be blessed, be encouraged. Do not walk in fear, but just walk close to the Lord, doing those things that please him. God bless you.